Keychron's Q line of keyboards are their higher end premium offerings that feature all metal construction, gasket mount PCB, and QMK firmware. Just in the last few months, they've been rapidly releasing the Q Max line, which has added more features to their top of the line keyboards. Today, we're looking at the Q5 Max to see if it's worth the $219 price tag. Now, before we dive in, I wanna mention this video is not sponsored and Keychron did not send me the Q5 Max. I bought it myself. I'm also not an affiliate of Keychron, but if the Q5 Max becomes available on Amazon, I will include an Amazon affiliate link as well as a direct link to Keychron's site down in the description. All right, I'm actually doing this one slightly different than usual. Normally, I'd be reviewing the pre-built version, but since Keychron did not send me the Q5 Max, I thought I would take the opportunity to get the bare bones version and finish it myself for one specific reason. As you can see, I still have Keychron KSA keycaps here, which do come with the pre-built model. However, at the time of recording this, you cannot currently get the all black color option in the pre-built model. So I ordered them separately from Keychron. I did want to at least be able to comment on the stock keycaps that come with the Q5 Max if you do get the pre-built version. I did not, however, use the switches that come with the pre-built version. I ended up building mine with Gatoron Baby Raccoon switches, which I already know I like. I also did another test here. I swapped Keychron's provided stabilizers with a set of Duroc V2 stabilizers, which I know and like. And I did that just to see if changing the stabilizers made this feel or sound any more premium than it does in its stock configuration. So let's walk through the specs of the Q5 Max and the assembly of the bare bones version that I did here. And then we'll do our usual breakdown of pros and cons. The Keychron Q5 Max is listed as a 96% layout, however, it more closely resembles an 1800 layout with 101 keys and an encoder knob. Construction is all aluminum for the case and the dimensions are 408 by 145 millimeters. The front height is 22.6 millimeters and the back height is 35.8 millimeters without keycaps. The weight is 2,215 grams or 4.88 pounds. The typing angle is 5.2 degrees and it does not have adjustable feet, though all metal keyboards of this weight often do not. The PCB assembly is a gasket mount design and the internal foam includes a layer in the case bottom, a second layer of foam under the PCB, foam between the PCB and the plate, and an IXPE switch pad so there's no shortage of foam. The plate is polycarbonate. Stabilizers are the PC mounted screw in variety and can be replaced easily if desired. The PCB is hot swappable and supports both three and five pin switches. Switch options in the pre-built version include Gatoron, Jupiter, Red, Brown, and Banana, which is a tactile option with a sharper tactile bump than brown switches. Keycaps for the pre-built version are Keychron KSA Profile, Double Shot PBT, and come in two color options to match the keyboard, shell white and carbon black. Connectivity includes Bluetooth for three devices, 2.4 gigahertz with a 1000 hertz polling rate, and USB-C wired also with a 1000 hertz polling rate. The back of the keyboard features switches for the connection mode, as well as a switch for pre-programmed Mac and Windows layouts. The Q5 Max firmware is QMK with VIA compatibility, allowing for easy customization for your key mapping and adding macros. The backlighting is south facing RGB with 22 modes. Battery capacity is 4,000 milliamp hour and the expected battery life is 180 hours with all the backlighting turned off and up to 100 hours with the backlighting on the lowest setting. The Q5 Max is available on Keychron's website for a price of $219 for the fully assembled version or $199 for the bare bones version, which does not include switches or keycaps. Now a bare bones keyboard is like taking one step towards building a custom or assembling a custom mechanical keyboard. Usually a bare bones, like all of the bare bones options from Keychron come mostly assembled. There's really nothing you need to do except for install your switches and your keycaps. And that's exactly what we could do with the Q5 Max, but I am not only going to install my switches and my keycaps, I'm also going to install a set of different stabilizers here. I, I have a set of all black Duroc V2 stabilizers that I personally like. So we'll start by just opening up the case here because we need to get at the PCB to swap those stabilizers out. All right, so stabilizers are all in and lubricated. Now we can just throw a switch on here and test out the stabilizers, make sure that they sound good, nothing is off, and then we'll finish the assembly. 
All right, now to finish this build, I am going with Gatoron Baby Raccoon Linear Switches, which are some switches that I have had in a few of my other keyboards that I have really enjoyed. So I'm gonna go with these. So let's do our sound test and then I'm gonna use this for a week and we'll talk about pros and cons. All right, now let's get into the pros and cons of the Q5 Max, and I'll also comment on the bare bones version versus the pre-built version a little bit along the way as well. We'll start with the pros. First up, the wireless connections were very stable for me, and the 2.4 gigahertz was a welcome addition. The 1000 hertz polling rate makes it suitable for gaming use, and I had no issues using the receiver about four feet away from the keyboard with a few you know, desk items sort of blocking some of the line of sight between the keyboard and where my computer dock is. I had no issues with that connection at all. It was stable, connected quickly every time. It just worked great. The Bluetooth connection was also stable. And I think one of the reasons why the Bluetooth on Keychron's wireless high profile keyboards has been nice and stable for me every time I've tested one is because in their more premium keyboards, the Q line, they've been putting this little plastic insert in, in sort of a cutout in the aluminum case. And that is to allow better transmission where the Bluetooth transmitter actually is in the case. Next, I like the choices that they made with the foam that comes in the Q5 Max here because you can adjust it to your taste. With all the foam in it, you get a more controlled sound and a little bit less bounce, a little less flex from the gasket mount design because you've filled up the open space with foam. And if you remove some or all of the foam, you're gonna get a different sound, of course, and you'll also have more play, more room for those gasket mounts to flex and do their thing. And you'll get a much more bouncy typing feel. So you can remove some of the foam, all the foam, you can leave it all in there. It's up to you and I like that. And that leads me to the typing feel here. Overall, I am happy with the typing feel and the sound that you get out of the Q5 Max. You've got a nice solid base here to customize that sound profile to your liking with keycaps, switches, adjusting the foam. And in general, I'm happy with it. But for the pre-built model, I do have to point out these KSA keycaps could be an acquired taste. They are very tall, especially compared to say Cherry keycaps or even OEM keycaps. They, they can take some getting used to. So if you get the pre-built model, I don't know that I would call this a crowd pleasing keycap profile. It's one of those that I think some people are gonna really enjoy it and some people are gonna really not enjoy it. But that being said, that could be a case if you know you won't like these tall keycaps for getting the bare bones option instead. Because even though they're giving you pretty good value with only a modest difference in price to get a full set of keycaps and switches, there's really no sense in getting a whole set of keycaps and switches that you know you're gonna just remove and get rid of. So you might as well get the bare bones option if you just already know you won't like these tall keycaps. Another pro here is the build quality is very nice as it was with the original Q line and the Q Pro line. The all metal case makes it quite hefty in a good way. It's very, very solid on your desk. Quality of the internals, all very good. I really just, I don't have com any complaints about the build quality. Now a small but potentially important pro is that Keychron has given us a double sized zero key here or a full size zero key, which you would normally find on a 100% layout. With a 96% or an 1800 layout, it is typical to have just a single sized zero key here because they normally squish this over just far enough so that everything is, you know, much more compact. And then you wind up with a single size zero key and that can lead to some entry errors if you are used to a 100% layout. So this is actually giving you a little bit of space savings coming down from a 100%, but you're not losing that full size zero key if that's important to you. So I'm consider that a pro. Now as a quick pro here for the bare bones model, I do personally think I'm enjoying my Gatoron Baby Raccoon linear switches more 
than I would have enjoyed the Gatoron Jupiter switches. Again, there's nothing wrong with the Gatoron Jupiter switches, and I did enjoy the banana switches. If you like a nice sharp tactile bump, the banana switches are actually pretty enjoyable, but I found the Jupiter switches to have more of a high-pitched sound that I don't really love. And like I said, I already knew that I liked Gatoron Baby Raccoon switches, so for me, that made it make more sense to just go with the bare bones option. Of course, I always mention having QMK firmware as a pro because you've got VIA compatibility here, making it very easy to customize to your liking. If you've used VIA once, then you know how to use VIA for every keyboard that's compatible with it, which I like. And the last pro that I'll mention here is that Keychron stabilizers are actually better than I thought they were. As we saw earlier, I swapped Keychron's included stabilizers for a set of Duroc V2s. Again, because I know I like Duroc V2s, so I thought that that might improve the feel and sound and make it feel a little bit more premium. So that was kind of an experiment. What I found is, well, they're only marginally better. I mean, I can tell the difference in the way they feel and sound. I don't really know that there's that much of an, an appreciable difference there. So that means the quality of the stabilizers Keychron provides are pretty good. Now, before we talk about cons, I'm gonna mention one thing as kind of a neutral. It's not really a pro, not really a con, it's somewhere in between, and that is the battery life. 180 hours with the backlighting off is not bad, but it's also not fantastic. 100 hours with the lights on the lowest setting is also not bad, but again, that's nothing novel. So I'm not really disappointed with the battery life here, but I'm also not amazed by it either. And that's why it's kind of not a pro or a con. It's like I said, not disappointing. I wouldn't complain about it, but at the same time, you know, not fantastic. Now let's cover the cons for the Q5 Max. And I really don't have many significant cons here, but there is one annoying thing about the lighting that I came across. And that is when you're not using the backlighting. If you have the backlighting shut off and you have the num lock engaged, there is a white backlight that you cannot turn off on that numlock key. So you will just always have that one light on if you leave numlock on all the time. And of course, this is not a problem if you always use the backlighting because then you won't notice that. But it's just a little bit annoying if you do turn the backlighting off occasionally or if you always have the backlighting off, you're gonna see that light all the time. Now there's not really much else to complain about here from an objective standpoint. There certainly are more subjective things that some people might see as cons, because as I mentioned earlier, you might really not like the keycaps that it comes with and maybe buying your own separate keycaps is something you don't wanna have to do. So that would be a con for you if you know you're not gonna like these. But again, if you don't mind getting your own keycaps and switches, then the bare bones option could solve that issue. So would I recommend the Q5 Max? Well, if you're looking for a full size or compact full size layout with a more premium feel, a more premium build quality, then I do recommend putting this on your list to consider. But let's talk about the price for a second. I didn't mention this as a con because overall, you know, all metal built fully assembled keyboards are gonna cost you usually over $150. So it's not outrageous, but at the same time, let's consider another recent release from Keychron and that would be the V5 Max. It is also, a compact full-size layout with a number pad. Now, one important difference in the layout, it does not have the full-size zero key. It is more of a traditional 1800 layout with a single-size zero key. So if that's really important to you, the V5 Max would not be a good choice. But assuming that's not a problem, let's consider the V5 Max for literally half the price, actually a little bit less than half the price. The V5 Max has every feature that the Q5 Max has. It has the 2.4 gigahertz, it has the Bluetooth, it has the good battery life. It has PBT keycaps, the screw-in stabilizers, the gasket mount design, that flexible feel. It's got QMK firmware with VIA compatibility. In terms of the number of things it does, it does all the same things as the Q5 Max. So why is it a hundred bucks cheaper? It is an all plastic build. So it's not going to feel the same. It's not gonna feel as premium. It's gonna feel lighter weight because it's made of plastic. It may have a little bit of a hollow sound. I don't have the V5 Max. I have tested the V1 Max video link in the description for that if you wanna see that video, but it certainly feels more like a budget or value keyboard. However, the fact that it does everything, all the same stuff as the QMAX line means you really have to ask yourself, is the aluminum case worth $100? So really it comes down to personal preference and whether you're looking for that more premium feel and look that you get with the all aluminum QMAX line. So that'll do it for this video. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the Q5 Max. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you got one, let me know, did you get the pre-built or the bare bones option? And if you got the bare bones option, how did you build it out? 
and how are you liking it? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content like this. And hey, while you're here, why don't you check out this video right here? Thanks everybody, see you next time.